Cantlin, Professor of Plastic Surgery at the University of Virginia and the current president of the American Society of Maxillofacial Surgeons. I've been asked to review the manuscript entitled Effectiveness of Conservative and Helmet Therapy for Positional Cranial Deformities from the Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. The aim of this large retrospective study was to analyze the effectiveness of a treatment algorithm assigning children with deformational plagiocephaly either to conservative therapy, defined as repositioning training with or without concomitant physical therapy, or passive orthotic helmet therapy on a 23-hour daily basis. The success of the Back to Sleep campaign against Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, or SIDS, has led to a near epidemic number of infants with positional cranial deformities. That is why this article is of such interest. In addition to the analysis of their results, the authors also sought to identify independent risk factors associated with treatment failure. A total of 4,378 patients were included in this study. 3D laser surface scanning was used to obtain anthropometric measurements of the cranial vault prior to, during, and after treatments. These values were then used to objectively assess the results of the two therapies. Overall, this protocol achieved a 93% complete correction rate based on objective measurements. 77% of the conservative group and 95% of the helmet group achieved complete correction. Within the conservative group, over 500 patients were transitioned to helmet therapy in mid-treatment due to failure to improve and of these, over 95% went on to successful correction with helmet therapy. Independent risk factors for failure were identified as poor compliance, advanced age at the time of initiation of therapy, the presence of torticollis, the presence of developmental delay, and increased severity of the cranial deformity at presentation. This study demonstrated that a significant number of patients with positional cranial deformities can be treated with conservative measures alone and achieve complete correction. Furthermore, delaying helmet therapy for a trial of initial conservative management does not increase the risk of helmet therapy failure. Finally, there are certain risk factors that can be used to clarify when a helmet should be recommended. The significance of this article lies in the fact that it is one of the largest studies of its kind. I particularly liked how the study utilized non-invasive, non-radiologic, 3D laser surface scanning technology to provide objective measurements in assessing treatment results. With the increasing evidence about the potential harmful effects of even a single CT scan in this age group, radiologic exams in infants should be avoided if at all possible. Many parents come to the pediatrician expressing their concerns about the appearance of their child's skull, and most times pediatricians are ill-equipped to give meaningful advice and treatment recommendations. This paper identifies specific criteria, risk factors if you will, to help the broader pediatric community understand the indications and limitations of conservative therapy versus helmet therapy. It was not the intent of the study to make any conclusive statement about the superiority of one treatment method over the other, but the study did provide concrete numbers and percentages for each treatment group. This information can be used to help pediatricians to reassure parents about the likelihood of a completely successful treatment of their child's skull deformity. Another very important message here is that these children are best evaluated by a multidisciplinary trained team of surgeons, nurses, physical therapists, and orthotists. Given the oftentimes complex ideology of the deformity, it is essential that a comprehensive approach to the problem be undertaken. The authors are to be congratulated in demonstrating that through their approach, a greater than 90% success rate can be expected. In my opinion, all practitioners who see children with this diagnosis should emulate their approach. Thank you.